In 1964, an article appeared in the New York Times about an Indian state, Kerala. It wrote about how Kerala at that time was struggling to lower its birth rate, despite having the highest literacy among the Indian states. Today, Kerala is one among the states in India with low fertility rate and good health infrastructure. Many have wondered how this small Indian state has achieved good social progress within limited income. Well, this bizarre phenomenon is usually referred as the Kerala model. Let's start with a little history. Kerala had many cultural exchanges with many foreign traders decades ahead, which helped in the formation of a multicultural society, way before the arrival of British. The foundations of social progress can be traced back up to the era of pre-independent India. At that time, northern part of Kerala was under Madras presidency of British, while the southern part came under the rule of princely states. There were many prominent leaders like Sri Narayan Guru and Ion Kali, belonging to the so-called lower caste strata, who fought for caste abolition and equality. Ion Kali started a school for Dalits, who belonged to the lower caste division, challenging the social norms at that time. Along with them many other prominent leaders belonging to different communities played their part to reform the society. Many Christian missionaries started schools, thereby made education available to all irrespective of caste or religion. The princely rulers of Travancore and Kochi passed many rules which promoted education accessible to many people. They also focused on the health sector and tried to make Western medicines available to the common people. All these factors made Kerala the highest literate state with good health sector even before independence. But these progress was not equally distributed along Kerala. The northern Malabar region which was under direct British rule, lagged behind in many ways when compared to their southern counterpart. Those region under the princely states were more autonomous and so more prosperous. After independence, the first government of Kerala focused on promoting education and good health care accessible to all minimum wages to workers introduced the land reform bill which helped to decrease the landless citizens to some extent the successive governments continued this policy of welfare state although it gave Kerala certain advantages this model also had many drawbacks criticism of the Kerala model has been based on its several failures the foremost is the inability to sustain industrial growth and meet the employment aspirations of the people. Various factors such as high labor cost, increased price of land because of high population density, and more time-consuming bureaucratic procedures as companies have to get grant from top level of governance to the lower panchayat level. These have caused setting up of a business in Kerala even more difficult. Numerous other factors such as trade union militancy, frequent strikes, and the anti-capitalistic mindset among public have driven away many industries from Kerala. The GDP growth of Kerala was poor from 1960s to early 1980s. But after that, Kerala saw a sudden jump in its economic growth. The reason? Gulf boom. When oil industries kick-started in the Middle East, Kerala took advantage of it. Many people traveled there to make a fortune. Their remittance back to Kerala gave a major boost to the state's economy. By 2019, Kerala ranked 8th in GDP per capita among Indian states. This has fueled internal migration to Kerala for low-end jobs from other states, even as Keralites have emigrated to other countries in search of better paying jobs. By that time, Kerala has shifted to service-based industries such as hospitality and tourism sector, which contributes a major chunk in boosting its economy. But Kerala is one among the states with highest per capita public debt and a high level of unemployment.
the rate of unemployment is much higher than national average. Also, even though the females in Kerala are well educated, this have not led to an equally high participation of women in the labor force or in governance. The Indian state of Kerala, presents a paradox of development, with its remarkable social achievements and relative industrial backwardness. But, only a balanced approach based on economic growth and social progress can bring true prosperity.